Mother. Man. Whitey here. When I pull up and gun down some opposition in my car, I listen to Murder Metal Mayhem. Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666 mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal Awful nice of Whitey to do that Hell for yeah, us. Hell yeah, thanks, Whitey. Like, yeah, thanks, <laughs> brother. All right, well, hey, it's Tuesday, and we're doing that thing. But no, wait, it's Wednesday. It's we're doing Wednesday. this on Wednesday. A little it, different. It, it does feel weird doing it, it on a Wednesday. I was but... sitting there last night like, something's off about that. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it's fucking Tuesday. I should be Yeah, it's so weird. We've been doing it on Tuesday every week. But uh, this week we had a schedule conflict and had to move it a day. Uh, but we're here at Horns High Studios for the Horns High Podcast Network doing episode 146. Getting closer, Chris, to 150, man. Four more, baby. Getting close. I got Joey and Chris here with me. Everybody doing okay? Uh, yeah, not doing too bad. All this pandemic kind of world out there. Joey, you doing it's all right? scary. It's scary stuff, man. Well, yeah, you, I'm doing well. I'm over here taking pictures because we got a new piece oh, in the studio, dude. so I'm getting excited about it. Yeah, <laughs> that new Richard Ramirez mask, Chris, from oh, Sick yeah. Rick, looking right at you, man. It's pretty badass. Pretty like, fucking, fucking brutal. Badass. And we've got it next to our zombie Ed Gein mask, which is crazy. And then, of course, the sepia H.H. H. Holmes mask. And then on the other wall, Chris, we got some got, good ones over there, the, too. The, the black and white gray man, Albert Fish. Right, with the blue eyes, which oh, is yeah. fucked up. And Pogo the Clown and fucking goddamn Ted Bundy, man. Nice. Shit, yeah. And then, of course, the original Hell mask. Yeah. Fucking Dominus. Yeah, oh, yeah. the fucking uh, Venom all black sick, metal check mask. Check out Sick Rick Mask, man. Yeah, Sick shit. Rick Masks. They're all from Sick Rick, Rick Fisher. And so we're loving our brand new Richard, Richard Ramirez one. He's got a cool zombie version of that that I is that. It fucking badass. amazing um i almost i almost got that one i really almost did because it's so fucking cool it looks so, it looks but dope, i'm man. glad we got the one we got with the fucking pentagram on the forehead I mean, we have to and I mean, it's got the blood spatter that we wanted i mean that's that's like bookends on that that's wall true. Yeah. Pentagram bookends. that's true that's true ramirez with the pentagram with the Dominus black metal with the pentagram. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so we've got some new stuff here in the studio. We're all going a little gaga with the pictures today. Uh, T-shirts. Chris, what do you got on over there, buddy? You got your Cubs hat on. Yeah, yeah, I got my Cubs hat on. I got my old-ass fucking Hank 3 shirt on that I got at a Hank 3 show. Cool. Fucking Hank 3, I think that was a mayhem story back in the early days, wasn't it? (laughs) Probably. I seem to remember (laughs) that it was. And then, Joey, I love the uh, Al Capone shirt, but what you got? Yeah, uh, the, the Gutter Christ Al Capone. I wore this when we did a Capone Patreon. Go listen right. to that. And I wore this also whenever we went up to Shaker's Bar. Oh, yeah. But uh, this was done by my guy Gutter Christ out in New Jersey. Uh, nice. Go check out Gutter Christ Productions. He's got tons of badass fucking merch. So. Fuck yeah, dude. And I've got my Crypt Keeper, the Creep Hell Show yeah. shirt from uh, our buddies at Fright Rags. We did that interview way back when with Ben. Remember that right. one, Chris? Yes, I do. A uh, really cool guy and awesome T-shirts. The best horror T-shirts I've ever seen uh, at Fright Rag. So loving that shit. Now, last week, guys, we did a good one. We went back to 1959, uh, the Clutter Murders. Yeah, uh, brutal. Family brutal. of four completely wiped out. Western Kansas, not the, not the place you'd expect it, which is what kind of gives it that aura and I thought we did a thorough job. We really covered it well. Of course, the book in Cold Blood yep. by Truman Capote is like an iconic uh, true crime book, a true crime novel. Yeah, like the um, first true crime, technically, I guess. True yeah, crime novel, so. and you think of all the ones that have come since, you know, Harold Schechter. I mean, there's been a bunch of them that are great, but you really got to give it up to Truman Capote for really being the pioneer of it. Um, but that quadruple murder of an innocent family is just absolutely nuts. And the, yeah. the hunt, you know, back in an era, Chris, when they didn't have, you know, surveillance cameras right. and stuff GPS, like that. all that shit. It was bro. like old school, like footprints and shit like that. They were able to figure stuff out. 
and pretty impressive. And then, of course, a little jailhouse snitch. Joey always helps. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> or a big gave him some names. <laughs> right, right. Uh, he really was key in that whole thing. Yeah. So if you missed it, uh, it's a good one. We had CK talking about the band Mastodon. Uh, we did a new Killer Cage match. Uh, Joey, you had a good mayhem story. Yep. Uh, a little karaoke destruction and just the usual silliness, Chris. All know. the fun. All the fun. And we did just pass a 1,200 listens to that one. I was impressed. Uh, that one's done it. very well. Um, Thanks, so, guys. All this shit. Uh, the Clutter Murders, I didn't know how that would do uh, with the listeners, and apparently they like it. So episode 145, guys, if you missed it. Now, tonight, we've got a good one, Chris. We love doing some gangster with Joey's got his Capone shirt on. Yeah, yeah. We've done them before. We've done some mobsters oh, and yeah. gangsters, but we got one nasty motherfucker Fucking up tonight. Whitey Bulger, man. Dude, yeah. Brutal as fuck. Very. And did the shit himself. Like, there were people yeah. that killed for him, but he was, like, hands-on, like, choking people out and and gnarly. I mean, just very tough. And he got very away tough. for a long time. He eluded the cops he for did. a long time. He did. He did. So the story is just absolutely nuts. Uh, South Boston is where he's from. Uh, the criminal career, starting at age 14, went on for a long time. And like you said, Chris, he was on the run until 2011. And it's a wild story. A lot of crime, a lot of murder, a lot of mayhem all rolled up into all one. And he was, you know, some I'm say. I'm sure he beat F- some motherfuckers with metal. Oh, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> right. sure. I would guarantee that. There, uh, there's metal in his death, so we'll we'll talk about it then. That's true. That's true. That yeah, that's oh, very yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now the the whole was he wasn't he an FBI informant is kind of an interesting discussion, but really I don't see any. There's so much irrefutable proof that he really was that yeah. he claimed he wasn't. So, you know, we'll talk about that. So it'll be good. We haven't done a gangster in a bit, and we like doing that stuff. Now we got CK warming up, ready to throw down in the metal segment. He's fired up as always, talking about a band. I have no fucking idea who they even are. <laughs> I, mean, I did yeah. listen to them just to hear what they were. Red Fang. I, I don't know anything no about idea. it. But as we all know, guys, he oh, is yeah. the great metal motherfucker. And CK knows what's up. So he's going to educate us. He's been running up and down wild man all day, growling at cars <laughs> that drive by Give and the old frothing <laughs> at the mouth. I got to imagine it's a frightening sight with CK getting fired up like that. Um, and so there's been recent deaths in the metal community. Another one in the rock and roll uh, rock community with uh, with Dusty Hill. So. Uh, we're going to talk about that, but some good news, Joey, so, about the drummer for Exodus, Tom Hunting, yep. uh, with his cancer fight. So we're going to talk about all that stuff yeah. in the metal segment. Uh, got a great killer cage match tonight. Kind huh. of an interesting one. It's but kind of very interesting. Chris, we got uh, we got a few listeners we want to say thank you to. Yeah, we do. We got Elizabeth Washington. How's it going out in Arkansas, Beth? Hell yeah. We got Tommy Davis, and we got Samantha Cram. Thank you all for the freaking numbers love you yeah we appreciate that they give us random numbers and that's how we determine our matchup and tonight joey we've got well, a crazy one yeah but in real, the cage real quick before i say who's in the cage yeah speaking of our listeners i just want to bring up i've been noticing well a i know did you notice the fucking uh terrifier like the the post no i did yeah the the episode and you oh, obviously yeah. you linked them you know I what I'm saying? Them, yeah. yeah they like that i was like fuck yeah Hell yeah but uh something i was gonna bring up is that you know as i check out these notifications from our murder metal man page that there's somebody apparently who's uh trying to flex on shaw back over here oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you gotta tell us what's up you gotta let what's us know up? and this guy's name and you might have seen it too is chris Two sheds, Cheney. <laughs> Instead of one I'm, shed. I'm like, oh, you got two sheds, so you're fucking balling over there. <laughs> oh, wow. So whoever this listener is, which is awesome that he's liking our shit, uh, thank you for being a listener. I'm just like, yeah. Right, but, right. man, let, sheds, let us know man. how your two sheds. We got to wow. know how this is. Wow. Yeah, this is, is awesome. that a different nation, Chris? Like, <laughs> it might check, be. Check shit. Right that's fucking hilarious, man. That- What's up, dude? Oh, that's hilarious. That's great. Yeah, it's, that's I awesome. I forgot you told me about it. Listeners that. are the best, and we appreciate all you guys. But, Joey, okay. what's, the, yeah, what's but, the matchup tonight, dude? All right, so tonight in the Killer Cage match, we're going to have fucking 
Henry Lee Lucas Our with boy. his fucking water and eye. Right. And he's going to be Three fighting. Teeth. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be fighting the child killer, Andrea Yates. Oh, damn. Because Henry's a little dude. And Andrea, she drowned all her kids in a bathtub. And Henry don't care about beating up a bitch, so. No. <laughs> so that should be interesting. And they're going to have a couple of objects, Chris, and a variable yep. to make it interesting. So they that'll be in our Mayhem segment. That should be a lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Thanks to everybody out there listening. Uh, we appreciate it. Numbers are always, you know, awesome to see. 2,900 this week. So oh, yeah. just under 3,000. But we appreciate it. That's awesome. And so thanks to everybody that yeah, thank you guys supports what we're doing. All right, Chris and Joe, we got a lot on our plate. Going to go east to Boston to Pactica and okay. try to track down one sadistic motherfucker on Fuck the yeah. south side. Hell yeah, let's get our gangster on. Forget about it. Forget about it. Can I just see Fuck yeah, man. Some new Iron Maiden new Maid. writing yeah. on the wall. Really different. Um, very cool harmonies there. Uh, apparently, the guy that likes to throw his guitar in the air doesn't do that in the studio, so that's cool. <laughs> I hear three harmonies there, so that's good. Uh, but lots of metalheads are stoked, including oh, yeah. me uh, and CK, I know, about that new one coming out September 3rd. New Iron Maiden. So fuck yeah. The Imagine... They have been fucking doing this shit for fucking ever. Forever, that was the yeah. first metal show I ever saw in 1983 uh, when they did Peace of Mind and they were touring for Peace of Mind. That was the first metal show I ever went to and I was completely blown the fuck away Hell and yeah. been hooked ever since. Now tonight we're going to be talking about one of the most vicious organized crime bosses the U.S. has ever seen. James Whitey Bulger terrorized South Boston for many years, spent plenty of time in prison, including, guys, the famous Alcatraz, which we, we just covered. Yes, so we, we talked a little bit about him, but uh, he was there, which is which is nuts. Uh, also shit happened to him when he was in prison, too. Yeah, and I definitely want to talk about that. Um, and he was an FBI informant, which he, of course, would deny and his involvement with a childhood friend and FBI agent John Connolly would cause a lot of problems, and including to Connolly himself. So yes, uh, this yes. is a, a really interesting story. And Whitey, as Chris pointed out, was on the run for 16 years until he's eventually captured. And so we're going to dig into this one tonight like always we do and uh, talk about it from a lot of angles because I know we all watched and listened to different things now, Chris, we've done some good gangsters before, but a lot of people know who Whitey Bulger is from that movie Black Mass with Johnny Depp. Uh, did you guys get a chance to watch I that? Watched it. Oh, I haven't, okay. I haven't seen it. I know Cashman's seen it. But yeah, yeah, Joey, you've seen it, but I didn't know if you had seen it too, Chris. But Joey, what did you think about it? Oh, I like it. I think it's a good movie. And yeah, Michael says it's fucking badass. Yeah. It's very close to, as far as I could tell from the research I've done, it's extremely close to the real thing. I was going to say, they probably, as far I'm as I'm sure like, some things aren't right, yeah. but it's awfully close. As it far as monster movies go, I feel like they touched it closer to the to the real story than almost yeah, any Yeah, Johnny other one. Depp was amazing. I don't like him personally, but man as an actor that motherfucker kills it right and he really did a good job with that so uh but what is it guys you think about gangsters chris like capone and machine gun kelly whitey bulger but what do you think guys how does that ring with the the true crime fans a lot of them dig the gangsters too uh just because of the crime, that's it, it is all their whole entire life is true crime, basically. So, true, true, like, true. They're so like, you got to check out what they did, what they went through. I mean, if you're just looking at serial killers, you're still going back, but these people, everything they did was a crime. So you got a lot. That's of stuff true, to look man. At. The entire lifestyle, you yeah. know, like wow, yeah, that's a good point, Joey. You agree with that? Oh yeah, for sure. I also think. Uh you got guys like this or like a billy the kid or something like that and 
the fact that these people seem to be able to kill without remorse right a lot do a lot without right. remorse right is always a, people are always going to be intrigued by that by anybody that's like that and the fact that it's these tough. guys were what like makes them work basically yeah and the fact that these guys were like in the public eye like constantly yeah and they were like nicely dressed you know, and fucking and nice to people, like for yeah, the most part. Nice right? vehicles. It's not like these are fucking scumbag guys. Gangsters are kind of like somewhat somebody to look up to. Right. They're respected. Right. They're like, if you come up in the neighborhood and you come up, you know, looking at that, you want to be like that. But, but man, it's still got to be a scary situation because yeah, maybe every day now, could be your last. Every I mean, day. You don't know, exactly. man. You go to start your car every day. You <laughs> guarantee you, you're wincing for a quick second there. Yeah. But um, I think there's a certain romanticism with this, like you've kind of pointed out, Joey. You know, you talk about the you know Billy the Kid and Wild Bill Hickok. That's and funny. I didn't even guys. see the notes until just now. I said <laughs> Billy the Kid, and you said it right there. Yeah, I mean, but it's but it's true though. I yeah. mean, those kind of people just seem to, and the nicknames too. Those are always big, just like the serial killers. Yeah. The ones with the catchy nicknames are always going to yeah. be like Zodiac and some of those. But, you know, Billy the Kid, Wild Bill, I mean, yeah. those are just cool. And Whitey Bulger is is a cool nickname, even though he fucking hated it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I think people like to sometimes root for the bad guy. I mean, especially if they feel the bad guy's been wronged or is getting over on, like, the oh, man, you know, the Whitey police. Whitey Bulger was not wronged at all. <laughs> <laughs> Or the government, maybe, you know, they're getting one over on the government with the FBI and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, you look at fictional characters like Tony Soprano would be a good one. Walter White, um, yep. Saul Goodman. Uh, all those are bad guys who are stars of their respective shows because people wanted to watch. sometimes they can relate and pull for, especially Walter White. Yeah, you know, Walter he's dying White. of cancer. Yeah. You can't help but root for the the guy, you know. But then he becomes this fucking monster, you know. I see this meme that said, "Fucking uh, Breaking Bad is totally different when you blame everything on Skyler." <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So people associate with that and somehow are just fascinated with it. Um, like Joey mentioned, you know, the whole remorseless, you know, just yeah. killing and so brutal. Um, so we're going to talk about that uh, as we go, I'm sure. Now, James Joseph Bulger was born September 3rd, 1929 in Boston. His father, James Sr., was from Newfoundland in Canada and immigrated to the U.S. where he married Jean, who was an Irish immigrant. Uh, they had uh, James Jr., of course, we know as Whitey, and he got that nickname because of some blonde hair and he hated it, so... I kind of I mean, reminds me of Capone and how much he hated Scarface, right? Yeah, it definitely. Yeah, and they yeah. said it was like super light blonde. That's why. Right. White, like almost white. Right, right. So his parents, though, wind up having to move to these projects, the McCormick Housing Project in South Boston, when Whitey's dad <sighs> so are you gonna lost, live, Chris? An, yep. lost an arm, man. Yep. Jesus Christ. Uh, in a work accident, which, of course, forced the family into poverty. Uh, people from South Boston refer to themselves as Southies, and you hear that a lot, Joey, <laughs> yeah. at Black Mass. Yep. That's kind of cool. Going to Southie. The Southies, <laughs> man. He's a Southie, you know. Now, Chris, Whitey grows up in a tough working-class neighborhood, and he learned the streets at a young age. But when you're in that situation, dude, it's like kill or be of, killed, man. You basically go with what's going on, You find, and you get a group of freaking... You get a group of fucking kids that you see you want to hang out with, and they're doing this shit you're going to follow with anyway. So out there robbing houses, fucking burning shit. Hell yeah. Doing yeah. whatever. Like, doing bad stuff. That's the way it is. At a young age, you yeah, know. Yeah, it's like 14, yeah. 12, 14. It's fucked up to think, you know. Now, the Bulgers had two more sons, William and John, who both did very well in school. Uh, William, of course, would go on to become a politician, like Billy a state Bolter. senator. Yeah, that's fucked up. Uh, the which longest is fucked running up. Massachusetts state senator, I think, still. I think you're record. right. I think you're right. Um, and it was Whitey, though, that's getting into trouble. So the other two were fine, especially William <laughs> did really well for himself. But there was always that question of did he know what Whitey was doing? And he's and, like kind of giving him a pass. But. Yeah, and it's hard <laughs> to say that he didn't. But, you know, John Connolly, I just watched an interview with him today. He swears 
that Whitey never talked to William about any of that kind of stuff. He just completely kept him out of it. So I mean, you got to. Yeah. So he's learning the way of the streets. He likes people to call him Jim or Jimmy and even Boots because he was often wearing cowboy boots. But Putting that knife in there. I was going to say, Chris, there was a reason why he's wearing cowboy boots. (laughs) Knife somewhere, man. Yeah, that's what they said. He had a switchblade down in his cowboy boots. I feel like it. Unless he had his jeans tucked or his pants tucked into him. Like, you got to pull your leg up. That's true. Pull your leg up and get to it. That's a little work, man. Yeah, unless he's just that quick, man. I don't know. But uh, he is definitely a badass. Uh, and But the nickname Whitey would stick above all the others. So Joey Whitey gains a reputation for being a tough kid, a very loyal Southie. He gets arrested at 14 for larceny and was involved in the Shamrocks gang. What do you know about his early criminal activities well that was his that was his start of his criminal activity it was basically when he was 14 he got caught uh well the start of his criminal record i guess i'll say right. now at 10 years old i heard he also ran away and joined the circus oh shit it's, which was like oh that's a childhood up. fantasy you know what i'm saying like right so i didn't see i didn't look too much more into that but i did read that in a couple spots and i was like okay because that just kind of showed like his outgoing nature in early right. age what he wanted to do anyway. but uh yeah like pete said he's arrested at 14 for stealing and you know it, as a youth he was arrested for larceny forgery assault and battery armed robbery and then he served five years wow. in juvenile reformatory uh, so whenever he gets out, he goes into the Air Force. But, um, yeah, even as a kid, he was out there fucking doing dirt. Yeah, that's... Like hardcore That's dirt. crazy, yeah. man. But living in projects like that, I mean, it's tough for kids to not fall into that, you know? That's why you it's have just candy, lot of, man. Lot of ten, take care of A lot of, of uh, temptation. <laughs> you know? Candy man. <laughs> candy man. <laughs> so, yeah, he's arrested a bunch. He gets out of juvie and would enlist in the Air Force in 1948 and back then, they were actually giving people the option in, in court of go to the army or go to jail. Right. And like, a lot of people went into the I'm, fucking I'm service because of the that. Service, fuck like, that, fuck it, I guess so. Um, and it was not uncommon then, but that's changed. I know when I was in the army, that was not that way. I'm not sure when it changed, but, you know, especially during wartime, I mean, they're more apt to. Be yeah, a little like, more lenient, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, during wartime though, motherfuckers probably more apt to be like, "No, I'm going to prison." Dude. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah, well, that's true too. That's true too. So anyway, um, he winds up getting into all sorts of trouble. Um, you know, he he winds up getting, uh, you know, going AWOL. He somehow though gets an honorable discharge out of the Air Force. <laughs> that's fucked 1952. up. 1952. So he did four, um, and. Uh, so that's about all I had read about his military career. Right, wasn't it wasn't much other than he got into trouble. Yeah. Um, he moves back to South Boston and resumes his gangster shit, ends up in prison again in 1952 at the Federal Penitentiary <laughs> in Atlanta for armed robbery and hijacking trucks. Chris, pretty crazy Just stuff. makes me think of Joe Pesci and Goodfellas. Yeah, and fucking taking their driver's the license. <laughs> yeah, yep. dude. Totally, dude. Uh, while he was there, Whitey confided with en- inmate Kevin Weeks, who would wind up writing a book called Brutal about his time with Whitey. I, I wish I would have read it. Um, I may wind up getting that one. because it's just part of an interview. Again. I did, too. I was just watching it this afternoon. A little last minute stuff, but um, he talks to Kevin Weeks when they were in prison together about him being used as a human subject in the secret government program MK Ultra. And Chris, we could totally do an episode on that. That's some fucked up shit, man. Man, they straight injected motherfuckers with LSD. I mean, I I like to party shit. (laughs) <laughs> but I mean, they're doing it under the guise of they want to see if it'll enhance interrogations yeah. and stuff like that. And yep. pretty fucked up. But we have heard about stuff like this. We did the Unabomber episode. Yeah. Ted, Ted Kaczynski, Joey, he was at Harvard. He was getting the same kind of stuff like that. Yeah. And I think that uh, this one was a little more uh, like the patients kind of knew what they were getting into or a little more explained about it. Right. More than ones out in Harvard, they kind of fucking mess what they were really doing oh, to them. That's which true. Was, yeah, that was right. Really shit. fucked with them. But either way, like you said, like the MK Ultra, like that's a fucking episode there too. Yeah. I mean, Chris, I've heard episodes on that others have done on yeah. that. It would be a good one for us to do. What do you think? 
Uh, of course. But of what course. do you think about effects on Whitey Bulger? Do you think taking all that LSD yes. fucked with him? Yeah, well, I, for sure, dude. I mean, they said he <laughs> like kept having like nightmares and shit afterwards, like terrible, like waking up screaming and shit. Right. If you're getting that, like constantly getting fucking doses injected to you, it's going to fuck with your brain. No matter what. I don't yeah. care what they say. I agree, dude. For 18 months, him and 18 other inmates were subjected to experiments in exchange for reduced sentences. He would say the experiments, like you said, Chris, are nightmarish and uh, took him to the depths of his sanity. Common sense is telling you if this guy's already <laughs> a psycho fucking killing machine, Injecting him with LSD, probably not a good idea. That's the best idea, bro. <laughs> it's like injecting a hungry tiger with LSD. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, he would later say that he heard voices but was afraid to say anything to the people doing the test for fear he'd be committed to a mental institution for life. So that's pretty fucked up. Yeah, because you don't want that. No, not at all. Uh, we would be talking about him if that's all that happened to him. <laughs> In 1959, Bulger is transferred to Alcatraz. Uh, later in 63, when Alcatraz was closed, he was sent to the federal prison in Leavenworth. Now, Chris, you said that some he, he was involved in some gnarly shit in uh, Alcatraz. What was that about? Oh, I don't know what he was involved oh, in. Oh, nothing, exactly. nothing specific? I thought there was like an incident or something. No, nothing specific. No. Okay, yeah, I hadn't heard of much either. I did hear that... Uh supposedly fucking he was sent to Alcatraz because he was discovered making plans to escape when he was in Atlanta. Ah, okay. So they're like, all right, that fuck you. Fuck You're going. The, yeah. <laughs> yep. And, of course, when we did Alcatraz, we talked about all the different people that ended up there from being, you know, escaped inmates Escape, from yeah. other institutions. Right. So where they're sending sense. them to the one you can't escape from. So. But you know what's and uh on fucking CNN, Bulger he fucking did like an interview or whatever after he got caught in 2011 and he said, "If I could choose my epitaph on my tombstone, it would be I'd rather be in Alcatraz." That's what he fucking said. Wow. Like, yeah, so I don't know, he must That's have had a good up. time in there. So <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> So he would That's have been crazy. there. Yeah. He would have been there in 1962 in the escape of the Anglin yeah. brothers and Frank Morris. So we covered that one in 140 episode 144 just recently with Tech. So if you missed that one, definitely go back and give that a listen. Now Joey Bulger would finally get paroled in 1965 and would not be arrested again for 46 years. That's fucking forever, That's right? A long for somebody like that, time. like doing uh, everything he did. That woman he had the kid with. I watched an interview with her today, and she said that he told her, "I don't ever want to go to prison again." Yeah. And the lady interviewing her said, "So does that mean he wasn't doing criminal activity?" She said, "No, I just mean." He said he's never going back to prison again. Like, <laughs> right. let's leave that alone. So, uh, pretty fucked up. But, uh, but yeah, then he fucking, you know, he gets out of prison this time. Right. Goes back to Boston and fucking gets right back into the criminal activity. Right. Like, even harder now. But he learns how to not get caught. Exactly. He's paying people. Yep. He's got he's a fucking not, payroll going on. Shit. You right. can't help but wonder, too, if... You don't know about Whitey Bulger. Like, like we don't know about none of these dudes for real. But it makes me wonder that during his time while being incarcerated, if he made any connections that ended up getting him into where he became with the FBI, you know? It's very possible, dude. Uh, but he grew up with Connolly, so, you know, yeah. there definitely was that tie right. with those two. But he gets out. He becomes a janitor and also worked construction for a while. And that's when he first met that woman he had the kid with. Because she said he was working construction, so I didn't have any reason to think he wasn't. He was probably But then at some point, he stopped doing the construction and then was yeah. full-time, you know, gangster. So. He was probably catcalling her. It's very possible. With his hard hat on, whistling and shit. <laughs> <laughs> he gets into bookmaking and loan sharking under Don Colleen, who ran the Colleen gang with his brothers. They were very dominating in Boston. Some harsh shit, Joey. 20 years of gangland hits. Yeah. Nasty, you know, rub out in the middle of the fucking restaurant. 
fucking full auto, just blowing people away. Fucking just wasted fucking Irish motherfuckers. Yeah, and it's all this turf shit and yeah. dumb shit like that. It's. I mean, it's to it, them. It's not dumb. I'm just saying, like, to, right. to the average person, it's like, what the fuck? But you know? to be honest, like back then, that's almost the equivalent of what you see in like the inner cities, like Chicago, oh, and New sure. York, and shit. Oh, sure. Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, that gang life is, is basically the same kind of. Fucking that's true. Thing. Just a different form of yeah. it. Uh, this would be known as the Colleen Mullen War. <laughs> a lot of fucking dead bodies over this gang rivalry shit. Whitey somehow manages to stay alive, and eventually a truce is achieved between the Colleens and the Mullins, and he's in, like, the nice spot because he's kind of right in the middle, and he's cool with everybody. Nobody seems like, you know, they want him dead. Like Kuklinski was with all the fucking other right, games. Right, right, and he learns a lot from working under Don Colleen. Uh, now, 1972 is when Whitey establishes himself as part of the Winter Hill Gang with Howie Winter, another you know Boston gang icon. Uh, this was a gang mis- mixed with Irish and Italians in South Boston, and Whitey begins to gain power by getting rid of any opposition and getting Howie uh, Winter to sanction the hits, which is usually how that works. And so Whitey is known as a very intelligent guy, but definitely he's got a thing for violence, not afraid to use it, completely without remorse. And he was a good fighter, they said, like, just straight up. Oh, yeah. Just walk up on a motherfucker and beat him. Oh, yeah. He was a tough motherfucker, man. Um, And he was moving up the chain very quickly. Now, Chris, 1979, Howie Winters is arrested uh, with some of his associates for fixing horse races. But again, Whitey just fucking sneaks out and Bro. doesn't get arrested. But he becomes the boss now. Right. Now that I power vacuum. Yeah. Now he's in the perfect spot again. And now, he's running the Winter Hill Gang with uh, Stevie Flemmy. With the venue. The rifleman. Uh, some harsh shit. The two of them now run in the Winter Hill Gang. Dude. So and pretty that, impressive. That's a dangerous guy to have running a gang too fucking well like, yeah not giving a fuck i'm taking care of shit and i'm taking care of shit my way right right now the gang headquarters is moved to the west side of boston and this would be when whitey was hanging out at that bar the triple, triple o's. o's i saw that in every <laughs> documentary about him uh the triple o's but uh that bar would be the sort of central meeting place for whitey and a lot of his buddies Whitey is involved in burning an elementary school to the ground to intimidate a judge who was pushing for desegregation. So what the fuck, yeah, he man? Just, like wanted all the schools still segregated. All yeah, right, whatever. Kind of fucked up. And then he throws a Molotov cocktail in the birthplace of JFK <laughs> to intimidate <laughs> Ted Kennedy, who was pushing for desegregation of schools in Boston. <laughs> so what the fuck? definitely not doing this shit like with any kind of panache. No, it's just yeah. like, fuck you. It's like, I'm going to fucking burn your fucking brother's house down just so you fucking don't fuck with me because guess what? You're next, motherfucker. Right. Well, there was that one family, we're going to get to it later with the with the bar that he yeah. winds up talking yeah, yeah. to him about. And I saw an interview with the mother, the wife of yeah. the guy, and talks about the little baby up on his lap was like 13 months old was teething and it like made her cringe to see hit the baby on his lap and he had a gun out and the baby was teething on the gun and whitey was just laughing at it holy shit I didn't that's see that fucked part. up yeah and he took and he turned to her and said it would be a shame if you didn't get to see her grow up wouldn't oh it? Yeah, dude, yeah yeah pretty yeah. brutal as early as 1971, the FBI would claim that Whitey Bulger was approached by John Connolly to be an informant in an effort to bust the Italian mob. What the fuck with that? Uh, specifically, the Patriarca family. Um, and they were, you know, running the Italian mob and the FBI had their sights on them. It's and they, they thought just Whitey to get rid of the Italian mob. There's right. all these other fucking. Well, the Winter Hill Gang had some Italians in it, but right. run by Irish. Right. right, run by Irish. But there's La Costa Nostra is what they were looking exactly, at. Exactly, exactly. So a few years later, when Whitey started working with Flemmy, who is of course Italian, he didn't know 
that Flemmy was an informant. So they were both informants. Flemmy since 65. And you see a lot of that um, when you research stories like this of people flipping sides and people, informants, you don't know that they are and they're like your closest friend. Joey, it gets almost confusing with that kind of stuff going on. Yeah, what do you make of it? That can't be fucking easy for them at all. And it seems like anybody that was fucking getting bigger, organized crime, you don't get bigger without rubbing some kind of political soldier, shoulders yeah, at some point. Right. And you either do that in a completely negative way to get yourself ousted or you uh, find a way to fucking get in on it with them. Right. And, you know, Boston at this time, fuck, man, fucking dirty shit all over the place. Right. And both of them fucking working together. Not to mention, this is, there's there's a thought process going on between Connolly and his guys and then fucking Bulger and his guys, and they're kind of right. on the same wavelength about some things. Right. About how they want to keep the neighborhood or things like that. Right. So Connolly's looking at it like, okay, you can help us keep shit, you know, in line the way that we like how we've always had right. it around here. Right. At the same time, I might turn my eye from a little bit of bullshit that you might do. Right. Whitey Including sees you. that as his excuse right there. Like, boom, this is where I fucking come in and fucking just take over because now I have them on my back. Yeah. I can do, they do already said I, I can do some shit I want. Right. right. Any I'm dirtier shit he's doing, he just fucking denies and says, fucking call me out on it then. Of course. Right. But, but man, that's a, it was he a crazy. Got, he basically got a free pass. He did, he did. have it. Well, he yeah. was paying for it, but yeah. he, they weren't going to fuck with him. They but he still, he, and, Okay, yeah, he gets to be a fucking snitch. He gets to be a snitch against the fucking people he don't want there anyway. Right. He's he's in war. He's at yeah. war with those. He's like, holy fuck! I've got so Get much rid fucking of my competition. This is like a huge fucking weapon for him. Right. Yeah. To, oh yeah. To just clean up fucking part of that shit and hide man. under their fucking yeah. wing, you know. In his heyday with the Winter Hill Gang, Whitey was extorting money from drug dealers around Boston, claiming that he had contracts. To kill them, unless they paid him, he would do it. So these people were afraid of him. He's walking Dude, around with the rifleman, that? man. That's Like, look, you know. see this? Right. This is for me to come kill you. You give me money, I'll let you live. Exactly. You give me enough money, I'll go kill the person that had you come to, there you go. Come to kill you. There you go. Right. <laughs> and he's making massive amounts of money from this scam. Um, he's also involved in arms trafficking for the IRA, which, of course, at the time was at war with the British. And due to the large Irish population in Boston, there was a movement to help the IRA. So he was like a hero uh, within his community for doing it. And there was a story I heard on one of the docs that I watch about that local guy with the liquor store. Yeah. Uh, him and his wife put all their life savings into opening this liquor store. And he gets a call or shows up at the door. Like Whitey your, Bulger, now. the rifleman, and another guy. And they told him that, yeah, we're partners yeah, with he's... you at this bar or <laughs> we're going to kill you. Because there's, there's no... a contract out on you from the other liquor Probably store yeah, owners that don't want you in business yeah. over there so if uh, you want to stay alive we're partners now dude right like did that to so many people well yeah and he the wife was at the store and he's like freaking out because they're at the house so they call her and they get her to come down there at, right. back to the house and that's when she sees the baby on the lap with her teething on the gun and stuff i mean pretty fucked up so what else are you going to do but fucking cut him in on the deal, you know? Like, uh, I think they gave him $67,000. There was no the negotiation. Whitey deemed it. See, here's sixty-seven grand. We run out of the back of the business running our shit, and you do your thing up front and just fucking just leave us alone. We'll leave you alone under the guise of this business. Yeah. So pretty fucked up stuff. Um but uh, I was just amazed that, you know, had the balls to do some shit like that. Now, Chris, you see that uh, story about Bulger getting the winning lottery yeah, ticket? What the fuck with that? Bucks? Like, <laughs> yeah, how the hell did he do that? This dude's out here robbing motherfuckers and then gets a winning lottery ticket for $14 million. But... It came out of the store he owned, so right. he pretty much went and found the winner. The that's what got. I'm wondering, if he hunted him down yeah, and like, took nah, the ticket. Yeah, like, nah, 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 that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty crazy, though. Uh, Joey, in 1994, the DEA, Boston Police, and Massachusetts State Police started 
investigating illegal gambling, and that's when Whitey starts to get into a shit. Yeah, I mean, Whitey Bulger's basically had a fucking uh, a cape around him for a while right. with some of the shit he's doing. Even can even fucking murder like that's no bullshit. He got away with some fucking murders during that time. That probably never would have, but. Uh, once the gambling shit came up, I mean, he was just, it, it was, it was a public interest to get involved in the gambling operations. Cause fucking the public didn't want it. Whitey Bulger was too big a name in what they were fucking aimed at. So he was going to fucking fall into that fucking, the investigation. Right. And this time he couldn't fucking pay or talk his way out of any of that because there was too many fucking uh, different affiliates of the law enforcement coming in. Together. Right. Yeah. More than the FBI was involved right. in this one. So now John Connolly would brag about the fact that he brought Bulger in. Uh, in that movie, Connolly's wife was definitely not into the fact he's hanging out with Bulger and these other gangsters and she winds up leaving him over it. Connolly is also getting a lot of heat from the agents above him to produce more information from Bulger. They talk about that a lot in that movie, Black Rain. But Black he was, mass. I'm sorry, yeah, thank you, <laughs> Black Mass. Uh, he was tipping off Bulger about the FBI investigations into his activities, the racketeering stuff. So this is where some of the gray areas are, and based on the way it went in the movie, Black Mass. Uh, Connolly was definitely going outside the bounds by taking money from Whitey to turn a blind eye and to tip him off. So that's what winds up being his downfall. Uh, Steve Flemmy, of course, would joke around about how he and Whitey didn't give the FBI shit and thought it was funny the way they let him get away with murder. So pretty fucked up. John Morris is the head of the FBI office, and he's also involved in the scam taking money and accepting plane tickets for his girlfriend to visit him while he's training in Georgia. Nothing so. wrong with that, dude. No. Hey, that's all good. Uh, 1988, the Boston Globe would blow things open by reporting on the involvement of the local FBI office and that Bulger was an informant. So there's quite a bit of stuff I saw on YouTube with him uh, Connolly doing local Boston interviews in response to stuff like this before he was convicted. Right. And he's trying his best to make himself like, sound no, good. No, I'm, but I'm cool. they call him out on it in a couple of them. It's pretty interesting. Now, Chris, as you know, people are finding Bulger's an informant could definitely turn his ass up dead. Uh, you're in the fucking mob. That's going to end you up dead, dude. Right. You're, that's the thing about the mafia, dude. You keep your mouth shut all the time don't talk about it. and even if sometimes even if you do keep your mouth shut people are going to think you talked and you're going to get dead right so yeah if they 100% <laughs> find out that you're talking not good no no and i mean even if somebody with a rep like whitey bulger still can get wiped out pretty easy yeah. whacked by whacked. some of these whacked hey. <laughs> uh joey 95 bulger and flemmy are indicted on racketeering charges now for our listeners what exactly is racketeering uh, I'm going to let Whitey tell you guys about what oh, racketeering please is. please do, He's, Whitey. Okay, children, we're going to let Whitey tell you all about racketeering. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, racketeering is the act of acquiring a business through a legal activity, operating a business with a legally derived income, or using a business to commit illegal acts. The U.S. government introduced the Racketeer Influence and Corrupt Organization Act in October 1970 to contain racketeering. Now, what are some examples of racketeering? Please it tell can us, take Whitey. many forms. Murder, Murder. <laughs> money laundering, financial and economic crimes, kidnapping, sexual exploitation of children, bribery, robbery, <laughs> cyber extortion, and drug crimes are examples of racketeering. Now, one last thing, why is it called racketeering? Because of the clandestine nature of the black market, most proceeds made from criminal rackets go untaxed. Term racketeering was coined by the Employees Association of Chicago in June 1927 in a statement about the influence of organized crime in the Teamsters Union. Thank you, Whitey. Wow, thanks, Whitey. <laughs> that was very informative, man. You've been boning up on your uh, research skills in the joint. I man. was. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there's other Italian mobsters indicted along with Bulger and Flemmy. Uh, through their lawyers, though, they're able to confirm that both Bulger and Flemmy are informants during the discovery phase. So now the mob knows. So now they're in the shit. 
Uh, since Connolly tipped off Bulger about the racketeering charges, though, he escapes, Boston. leaves Boston. Oh. And I saw a lot of stuff about all the different places he was at. There was some sighting of him in London in 2002. I mean, very elusive. Oh, yeah. 16 years, yeah, Chris. Dude, 16 Man. years. He was in the top 10 of the FBI's most wanted for 12 years. And I saw they had a $2 million reward for him. Only second to Osama bin Laden. He was fuck. number one after bin Laden got. Yeah. Him. After they got bin Laden. He yeah. Was turned to number one. That's fucked up. How, fre- how freaky that's going to be. Right. When you're all, uh, number two, but now everybody's looking in your for 80s, him. It's too. Like, like yeah. God damn, man. This right. guy's fucking they old. I don't think dude. I'm dead yet. Right. They get the U.S. Marshals fucking help him find Oh, yeah. Like, now, a woman from Iceland. This is interesting. The FBI actually was using a picture of Catherine Grieg the girlfriend, in hopes that maybe somebody would notice her more than Whitey thinking that she might have been the one going out to the store and right. stuff like that, more so than with him. And so a woman from Iceland who actually lived in the apartment uh, nearby where they lived um, was the one that called the FBI and got them caught. The FBI, I don't know what the ruse was to get him out of the apartment, but they did it's because they had a they said they had a storage unit or whatever. So they had the uh, oh yeah, they had the superintendent or whatever call them and say there was a robbery. Want him to come downstairs? Uh, okay. So Whitey came downstairs and like they instantly was like, "Put your fucking hands up!" Right, in like a parking garage or something. Yeah, looked yeah, like so, yeah, yeah, and fucking that was that. Yeah, He's without like, incident. And then some, and then there was like, no, he's got dementia. So the cops like were like, hold on, did I just arrest some crazy dude that thinks he's fucking Whitey Bulger, dude? Oh, that's <laughs> but, funny. Like, no, it's, this is it's me. him. Yeah, no, this is me. I'm fucking known up to it. Whatever. <laughs> wow. I guess they told him to get on his knees and put a hand behind his back. He's basically like, fuck you. <laughs> right. <laughs> doing that. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's more than eight hundred thousand in cash at the apartment. Thirty firearms, fake IDs. Of course, the girlfriend, she winds up getting caught. Uh, she goes in without incident for, you know, harboring a fugitive, basically. Um, she's like 20 years younger than him and had been with them for quite a while. Dude, and he said, fucking, I'll own up to everything I've done. Just let her go. Yeah, he but wanted like, to like, let them to let her, her go. Alone. She wound up getting she eight years. She got like eight years, years yeah. for harboring, like you said, harboring a fugitive. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I did see that, that he was trying to get her out of it. Um, he was brought back to Boston and charged with 40 crimes, including murder, extortion, racketeering, money laundering, and narcotic sales. And he pled not guilty. Now, Chris, he would have his lawyers go on this crazy campaign to prove he was not an informant. Instead of trying to prove he wasn't guilty, they just seemed like they were driven to just deal with, is he or is he not an informant? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Like the the fine wording of it, and was he truly an informant? Mobsters just don't want to be called out on that, like I said, dude. Yeah, I mean, we've... Right. We've oh, seen... you're a rat. No, I'm not a rat. I might all have talked. family's all rats. All family's all rats. <laughs> I might have talked, but I'm not a rat. <laughs> like, they don't like that shit. Right. I think one of the books that one of the uh, mobsters wrote about this was called Bun- Pack of Rats or something yeah. like that. <laughs> and the guy that wrote the book was on the interview, and he had a really strong Boston accent the way he said that. Nice. By pack of rats or whatever. Pack of, pack of rats. So uh, it was just funny. But yeah, he's more driven to prove that. And we've seen that with some of these other ones, Chris, where they are they don't have any issue with you talking about him That's killing people saying, and yeah. hacking like, them up. Oh, but yeah. But not God talking. forbid they've got a funny voice or they, See? you know, they're, <laughs> right. or, they you know, a... they say you're an informant, you know, like these are serious things to them. It's their rep. It's, it's yeah, who they I mean, are. And who they are. Hey, you know, that's, that's their right to, to believe that. You yeah, know who I feel like was not a rat was the ice man. The ice I, man. I don't think he was much of a rat. <laughs> I don't think he was a rat. <laughs> but there's a lot of people that claim that his stories were grossly right, exaggerated yeah. and that that author that wrote the book he's written several books he's gone now but um you know a lot of people think that his books are he philip carlo about, that he went too far yeah he wrote the one about right karate, the other tommy one we karate, did karate, yeah. yeah and tommy said that it was bullshit so but you know, why wouldn't he say that of then? course i'm not talking shit tommy right <laughs> right right please 
Uh, now, November 2013, Whitey Bulger is found guilty and sentenced to two life sentences. Um, he also had to forfeit millions. He was first sent to prison in Florida before being transferred to Oklahoma, then Virginia. Apparently, he's busted in prison in Florida for masturbation in front of a guard and then also threatening a female staff member. So he's not a good guy. He's in his 80s and he's being a pain in the ass. Just the normal old man in a nursing home. <laughs> right, right. Now, despite the problems he's causing, his health is finally starting to fail. But Joey, October oh, shit. 29th, 2018, the 89 Bulger is found dead in prison. Dude, like What's 24 the hours after he got to that prison. Oh, is that it how was quick it was? It was 12 hours. Was it? Okay, 12 yeah, hours. Or, oh, that's wow. what I heard. I mean, but yeah, within 24. It, it, within but... 24 hours Ooh. of him getting sent to this prison. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but but anyway, so he fucking he gets there and like like we said, he wasn't there long. It wasn't a fucking day, and uh, they fucking grab him up. These guys and they fucking try to push him out. He's in a fucking wheelchair, and they try to push him out of view of the CCTV because the fucking they're in prison, so obviously, obviously things are. Yeah. Uh, right. And they end up pummeling him with a fucking padlock and a sock. So there's our medal God, we were talking damn. about earlier, nice. and um, a shank, and a shank. So. Now, they attacked him, and they, they really tried not to, you know, be seen on the cameras and stuff, but they did get seen. And there is CCTV. You can see him oh, getting wow. hit and shit. Uh, but, yeah, they fucking pummeled him. Like, they fucking wanted to ruin him so that he was unrecognizable. And they did. Yeah, and it was a straight hit and retaliation. And fucking, uh, he was hit so fucking bad, and, and, and he was bleeding so profusely that his eyes came out yeah they got I thought, wow I they, they didn't they right they got, said they didn't know if he, they got gouged, gouged out, out or if they got and it's knocked out from getting hit so fucking right. hard and his fucking tongue was fucking like almost fucking cut off yeah wow and, and, and the, they had a couple suspects i know one guy was uh uh freddie gaius yes who was a mafia hitman who also i can't remember who he killed somebody from like uh uh Man, one of them other fucking big families I can't out there. Which family it is off uh, hand, but yeah. yeah, man, this guy. I they said that he was one of them. No one ever really got charged with that murder, dude. But they had, he's been in solitary since then, right? Dude, like fucking still yeah. sitting there, not never been charged. No, with it. not wow. charged, but in solitary. Yeah, that's fucked up. Wow. And and they say, you know, you have to wonder within twelve hours the way the hit went down was there inside, inside prison officials right. that right. fucking knew They're what like, was going on. Like, there. oh, yeah. we'll transfer. Definitely right here. a mob hit style the yeah. way they did that now, I and fuck, the mob hitman being the, the one of the two i did fuck this up because i was gonna originally whenever he asked me how he died be like well he was standing there and all of a sudden he was shot in the back of his head and it was over <laughs> but that's not how it happened because no. i you know but i mean that's he he fucking brutal your last moment yeah you're fucking getting punishment back for a lot of bullshit that you did you would have been happier to have got fucking blasted in the head outside somewhere oh yeah than what he went through oh fucking. yeah fucking torture yeah right it went on for a while definitely uh you know such a, a good gangster story with the end like that they either end up in prison or dead and in case of whitey bulger both man so yeah <laughs> pretty fucked up but he ruined a lot of lives and he that's did. the thing you know when you talk about this shit i mean he got hit for a reason because a lot of people were pretty pissed off at him but uh Anything so, to add to this one? Would you guys? consider him a snitch? I mean, he was just working back and forth. Is he a snitch or is he just working? I'm not aware of any particular person he like busted out, but maybe he did. I don't really know. I do know that, you know, they were all dirty, so I mean, he was turning in information on the rival gang. True, yeah, right. so he was. So but, so, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, okay, which way do you weigh it? That the feds were using him to get information, or he was using the feds to take care of his fucking right. opposition? Right. So It's, a li it's definitely saying, different yeah. than a classic, like you're saying, Chris, like it's a snitch, you know? I definitely would look at him that way, but he was just a shrewd businessman in that line <laughs> yeah. of work. Yeah, employing the government to give you cover as you do your shit. Pretty so, much. Um, definitely an interesting one. But uh, uh, I did my research uh, with a few good documentaries out there. I mentioned a few interviews I watched today. Um, also that movie, Black Mass, really good. Johnny Depp plays Whitey Bulger. 
Uh, as far as I know, it was pretty close to the facts of the case. <coughs> There's a lot of stuff on him. There's several books I mentioned as we went. Check them out. Uh, read up on this stuff. It's interesting. There's a lot of stuff out there, so you can definitely learn a lot if you want to give it a listen. Um, next next week, week, we're going down oh, under. Dude, I can't it's going to be so <laughs> badass. Like, Another Australian case. This is a good one, Chris. I, He's been on the I list for a lot, quite a while. Baby. Ivan Malat, the backpacker murder. I'm getting it excited because we it's been a little bit since we did a really brutal one. We right. kind of did a few uh, different kind of topics, which is always awesome. Oh, yeah. But we're fucking doing backpack killer. Oh, yeah. Fucking, Some straight serial killer yeah, shit, Yeah, fucking uh, the movie, uh, what is it? I can't think offhand. Oh, either. yeah, I just watched oh, it, too. Uh, Wolf. Wolf, Wolf Creek. Creek. Yeah, yeah that's the, good. That was based off of him. Right, it's very loosely based. Right. But somewhat, re- you know... Yeah. stuff that they tie in yeah but horror buffs they might know oh, it yeah. from that but, oh yeah but we're doing the real case though right uh if you're not familiar with ivan malat the gruesome story involving a trail of dead bodies found near the australian uh in sydney the balangalo forest uh definitely a good one <laughs> he's been on the list for a long time it's like a mouth harp and <laughs> jenny <laughs> bought us some vegemite on it's amazon not, we just it's got it's it yesterday yeah yeah and so i asked sean ferrugi of in malice's wake yeah. the australian how do we eat this because we're going to eat it yeah. on the air we're going to read it uh we're going to do the story and then we're going to eat some vegemite and Sean is claiming lots of butter on the toast and sparing with the Vegemite. I'm pretty whenever because uh, like I said Rick Ring he yeah. sent it to me and it was pretty much exactly what he said. He was like hot. <laughs> he was like get yeah, hot because the Vegemite's like really fucking uh, coarse. Oh okay. So to get it to melt and spread, oh. it, it, it's like basically if you have a fucking hard stick of butter, you know how you try to spread it, and it's like fucking turns to chunks and shit. Right. That's how the Vegemite was. But if you get that shit fucking hot and you get the oh. butter on there, there you go. Okay, so we're gonna try <laughs> Vegemite next week, Chris. Bringing the toaster out to the fucking uh, studio. Well, we'll toast it and then she's gonna uh, yeah. do it up and then cut it into pieces and we'll eat awesome. it while we're doing the show. So Vegemite, we're going to try it. So all you Australians are going to get a laugh, I bet, as we all gag yeah. uh, eating the Vegemite. But That's going to we'll be see. a good episode. It's going to be great. I have him a lot. All right. Uh, we've also lined up another interview with Dr. Harold Schechter. Yes. Very cool. True crime author and a shitload of books on serial killers. Yes. I think I've got every one of them. It's all amazing we get people like him to talk about. I about know, <laughs> more than once. Uh, but Harold's a good dude. Uh, his latest, Maniac, is the one I read about the horrible bath school disaster, which is on our list for August. And so we're going to talk to Harold about that and some other topics that we got coming up, Chris, Leopold and Loeb. Yeah. Uh, some good ones uh, that I'm anxious to hear what he's got to say. Maybe maybe some Columbine yeah. discussions with Harold. So. Our 150th. Yeah, we got that coming up. So it should be really good. We're doing that one Sunday, so that'll be fun. And, Joey, you got any good page a day? We love page a day. Yeah, I got a couple of them. And uh, one of them is actually a tie-in because... Uh, Pete showed me the new book he got in today. It's about the Robert Durst case. Yeah. And it just so happens one of the pages today is, mentions him. It's not about him. That's but. funny. All right, so I'm going to get into these. So uh, page a day, thanks again. <laughs> Nobody will ever hear it from that company, but I'm always going to say Because <laughs> I fucking get these straight from that. But uh, So page a day is talking about um, the murderer and whenever murderers got caught and the way they got caught was like a minor crime, like a stupid thing. Like, like the fucking tail light out. Like Rifkin. Yeah, or, like, yeah. Right. So who they're talking about is um so like Timothy McVeigh, he was got he got caught for driving without a license right. plate. After he fucking, you know, right. bombed the building, he's out fucking driving around fucking and he's got no plate on the vehicle and he's got a concealed weapon on him yeah, and then yeah. they fucking link him so uh that was mcveigh and then you have ted bundy and then he's driving a stolen car of course he's down in florida and after he killed you know the leech girl um he's still out there just fucking wild and drinking and Doing fucking thing, he's in ted a fucking bundy. stolen vehicle and he gets fucking pulled over and that's how he got caught right uh he attempted to flee the scene of course and then he's detained um so then you got uh peter sutcliffe 
and he was caught for driving with a stolen license plate. So he, Yorkshire I mean, Ripper. Yeah, the Yorkshire Ripper. So he gets he's out in this car and he's got stolen plates on it. They pull him over for that. Whenever they pull him in, they're like, "Hey, you match these sketches right, <laughs> right. here, of the Yorkshire Ripper." <laughs> right. Uh, so he got caught that way. Um, you got fucking David Berkowitz, and he got caught parking, f- parking in front of a fire hydrant. Yep. Exactly. Because yeah, somebody dumb. saw that he pulled the ticket off, ripped it up, and they remembered that. Right. And they're like, hey, at this time, this car. Right. And that's how they got fucking Berkowitz. And then the last one, and like this would Pete was talking about Durst. Uh, Robert Durst, he was caught for stealing a chicken salad sandwich. Yep. <laughs> yep. And, uh, that sounds like Shane, bro. <laughs> he is a millionaire, a million, multi-millionaire. He had been a fugitive for two weeks when he was caught for stealing that sandwich, and in his car they found $40,000. Right. That's how he got caught. What a caught. dumbass. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, stealing and he said chicken. he didn't even know why he stole it. It just yeah. was like an impulse It's like thing. Winona Ryder stealing the candy bar. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like what just got to do some fucking shit. What an idiot. All right, so that was that one. Uh, the other one I got from Paige today, and this is kind of a localish one for us, so I thought that was cool. And uh, it's about the Watsika Wonder. Oh, which, yeah. We did that one. Did you guys yeah, do we that? We did do yeah. Watsika oh, okay. Wonder. Okay, then I won't talk too much about it, but I'll still it's run through it. It's a good story, it. though. Yeah, it's a good story. I'll, ju- I'll just yeah. do it anyway, then. Yeah, yeah go whatever. ahead. Yeah, it's a good story. It's been a while. And off topic, did you do Tony Costa? No. No. Okay, you know who that is? Sounds familiar, okay. but offhand. I, don't okay, I think I asked Chris one time. He couldn't remember either. I was like, fuck, can't remember. Anyway, that was another one from a page a day, and I saw it. And I was oh, like, okay. But I knew I already knew him. But anyway, so the Watch Seek a Wonder, and if you like what I'm telling you, go back and find the episode. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, it had to have been the early one, because I, no, I don't even remember I think we were it still right up, we were, I think we were still upstairs. I think so, too. And we, uh, I have a book on it. Yeah. There's only one book. I have it. The, the book about the, book. the Watson. It's the journal from the doctor that treated her. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. And there's a lot of YouTube videos about of uh, people doing ghost hunts there. Um, my daughter, Katie, was just talking about it's open for Airbnb if oh, you want to wow. stay there. Wow. But it's very expensive. Yeah. But the owners, for a period of time, didn't want anybody on the property. But now, apparently, either they or new owners are cool with, to some extent, exploiting the house for what happened. So go ahead. All right. So let me tell the story of the Wasika Wonder. If you like it, go listen to our other episode and go see if you go stay at the, the B&B. Yeah. There. Uh, Watsika, so, Illinois. So, you're right. So for our listeners that don't know, Watsika is a town outside of Chicago, a little bit south of it. Um, so kind of closest to us within a couple yeah, between hours. between us and Chicago. Yeah. Uh, so um, in July 1877, 13 year old Lawrence Venom, Venom. How do you say it? Venom. Venom. That's what I thought, but I was like, man, it sounds too. I brutal. know it sounds weird. Uh, so Lawrence Venom. She goes into a strange catatonic sleep, um, where she claims to speak with these spirits and stuff. Goes into the spirit world. Uh, they occurred multiple times daily and would sometimes last up to eight hours, which is a long ass time. Whenever it's a she, long fucking yeah, time. and whenever she would come out of it, she wouldn't fucking re- remember any of it or recall any of it. But she would be speaking in different voices and things of that nature. Um, so the di- the doctors diagnose her as mentally ill. And they want to send her to the insane asylum in Peoria, which, of right. course, we've talked we're about that, yeah. too. Yes, Barton. <laughs> uh, in January 1978, uh, another gentleman, Aza Roth, who was also from Watsika, but, of course, they didn't know each other, uh, supposedly. I mean, the skeptics to it, too. But, yeah. Uh, but they, you know, for, for our sake, they didn't know each other. He visited the Venom family, and he claimed that his daughter, Mary, had experienced the same exact thing that had been going on with Lurency. Um, and that he was convinced that her spirit still existed and that he was communicating through uh see the girl. Right. Um, so Mary Roth, you know, she dies uh, uh, July 5th of 1865 while hospitalized in the asylum, which as we yeah. you know, know from that fucking story, you never know what kind of situation really was yeah. the cause of death there. Right. Uh, but um, – she was committed after she began slashing her arms with a straight razor, which was the worst of the things that she did. You know, this started with the trances and things like that and escalated. Right. And then she started slashing herself with the razors. She had become convinced and she got obsessed with blood and was convinced that she had to get her blood out. And she was doing it with pins and leeches and, right. you know, finally to the straight razor. And they're like, okay, you got to go to this fucking hospital. And I didn't even, I, you guys would have to remind me, I didn't see much about the death and then talk about it on here, but, uh, I don't, they said it didn't happen very long after she had been committed though. So, yeah, I don't remember offhand how she died, but it was just this crazy thing where there was the girl that died in the town. Yeah. 
and she was she claimed like she knew the people like from her past yeah and it's like how would she know who her aunts were and stuff they would the families didn't associate with each other right and the girl that died was able to play piano really well and Lawrencey was not so that she able to play the piano and not only play the piano but was playing songs that the other girl wrote yeah. on her own was playing the songs like she knew them, yeah. which is pretty fucked up. Which was the, her originals. So uh, so Aza Roth, the, the father, he only intervened whenever they were talking about sending her to the asylum. Like He right. let them exhaust all the medical things they could do, right. and then he came over and he said knew. something. Yeah. Uh, and then he brought the spiritualist, and I thought this was funny because I think of Pete. His name's Dr. E. Winchester Stevens, and using the, the letter. Yes, you know? yes. So Dr. E. Winchester. Yes. So they go over there, and they mesmerize Lawrence. And within moments, she's talking to other uh, voices and things like that. Uh, a, a woman, Katrina Hogan, and then a boy named Willie Canning, who would supposedly commit suicide they said they talked to her as him for like an hour and then um all of a sudden she throws her arms up falls backwards and says i'm going to let you talk to a calmer spirit because i'm in heaven and she said the new spirit was mary roth right which is fucking crazy because there's no way she could have known that right um so uh she said the spirit um you know, as Mary Roth, the the trance with her as Mary continues into the next day. Right. And and now Mary Roth, Laurency, is she's not comfortable in the house. She's not like employing nothing, but that's not her home. Right. And she, she wants, wants to, to go, go to back her home. house. Yes. Right. So she's like, no, I want to go to the Roth house. So Aza Roth lets his wife know what's going on. She comes over to the Venom house with their daughter, uh, Minerva Alter. While they're walking up the sidewalk. Lawrence sees them. She's like, oh, there's Ma and, and Nervy. And, and Minerva said nobody had called her that since Mary had died. There's no way right. that she could have known. Right. Um, so they allow her on February 11th to go to the Roth house. And she's there. And, you know, I mean, they drive past her old house first off on the way there. And she's like, wait, why aren't we going to our house? And they're like, oh, well, we moved a couple years ago. So she knew where the house was that wow. they had lived. Uh, she lived with the Roths for several months yeah. as Mary. And, so crazy. And, and she seemed to, like, completely forgotten her other life. But she did let them know that she only had until May. Right. And then, so, you know. She knew all this shit about the, about the Roth's house, about their possessions, everything they you know had. Right, way too much to be fucking made a up. Coincidence. Yeah. yeah, and then so early May comes along, and she tells them, you know, it's time for her to leave, and she's like touching them and hugging them overly and all that. And then all of a sudden, you know, she goes back on May twenty first back to the Venom house, and everything's just gone. No signs of any kind of illness, nothing. She is Laurency Venom once again. She's happy and healthy. Uh, she remained in touch with the Raw family because she felt some kind of closeness with them, yeah. even though she didn't remember right. anything about it. And then she ends up moving to Kansas with a farmer who she marries, has 11 children, and had a normal life. But That's fucking the insane. The Watsika Wonder. Yeah, yeah, the Watsika Wonder is a really cool story. That's a cool page of day, man. Yeah. Different than the usual page yeah. today. So and but yeah, so the murder mail man. Yeah, so we did it at Chris that. or a Halloween week or the month of October. I seem to remember we did the Watsika Wonder that I first our was. first Halloween. So <laughs> um, check that out. Yeah, that's going back a ways. Yeah. So very cool. All right, well I think CK's getting ready to come out and do his thing. So Joey, what the fuck do we need to do? We need to get our metal on. <laughs> Known the world over as the master of metal, the crusher of posers, and murder metal mayhem's knower of all things metal, hailing from Wild Man Street in Danbury, Connecticut, standing at six feet of brutal punishing madness, weighing in at 220 pounds of poser pulverization, the one, the only, toughest bastard on the planet, Chris... C.K. Comics! There he is. Great metal motherfucker. What's up, C.K.? What Yo, up, what's up? Same what's shit. What's going on, Same gentlemen? in the studio, just different night. We, uh, I, I we've got, been doing I, a new thing now, C.K. We're eating Pop-Tarts on our break here, and so we're coming into the episode chewing. 
And don't mean any disrespect, but it's a new tradition here that we. No, I, I, I got, I got to get on the ball and get some pot tarts. <laughs> yeah, we got blueberry and strawberry so, tonight. So, so uh, CK so I, gonna get some s'mores or something fancy. There you go. Right? No, 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 shit. no. I, 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 I'm, I'm traditional. Strawberry. Okay. All right. Very and good. I, I tra- putting out a disclaimer here. I had nothing to do with the first segment. Of Whitey Bolger. Yeah, you don't want anybody um, paying you a visit. I, 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 don't, I don't want anybody, you know. Right. I know he's dead, but I don't want any of his associates, maybe, you know, paying a visit. <laughs> right. That's no, cool. you so, had um, nothing again, to do with it. Again, CK had nothing to do with it. All right. I'm CK. I do the metal segment and non. Okay. Right. So if All anybody right. has any questions. Hey, who's okay. the CK guy? I'm going to put a fucking bomb in his car. Yeah, we even got Whitey to do the promo for the episode this week. You'll have to hear it. All right, CK. Cool. Well, we got you on to talk about metal, and we got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. But you got a band that you're going to do. I've never even heard of them before, dude. I had to check it out when you told me who it was. So Yeah, I'm, start, I'm starting to get a little obscure on, on some of these bands. Um, no, trying, obscure is, is new stuff, dude. Like Trying to... Um, you know, what the hell? Who's ringing? What is that is ringing? Is that Pete calling you? Yeah. <laughs> it's coming off my other iPad. Uh. <laughs> Make it stop, please. CK's is like, <laughs> fuck, I'm not fun. He's a popular, he's popular motherfucker. What I guess. Fuck? So what band are you doing tonight, CK? Um, I'm doing a band called Red Fang. They're from Portland, Oregon. And they were formed in 2005. Um, so they've been around um, good 16 years, give or take, Okay. Um, with the same band members, as far as I know. They've been with the same band, band members since the beginning. Um, four piece, like I said, out of Portland. Um, the first album came out in 2009, which was um, a self-titled album, which, which was pretty much their first two EPs. Um, on one album, and it was released on a very obscure label called Sergeant House Records, um, which you know I have, of course. Of course you do. Uh, of um, course. You know, just make that clear. <laughs> um, and like I said, it was the first two EPs on on one CD. Um, it, d- it didn't do that great because obviously you're on a smaller label. Um, it did okay, like regionally for them, but as far as nationwide, it didn't really hit. Um, but it did catch the ear of Relapse Records, um, iconic metal label, which everybody oh, yeah. pretty much knows about. Yes. Um, and they released their, I would say, their real debut for them, which is Murder and Murder Murder the Mountains. And Sounds like a fun two, vacation. Yeah, that was that was released in two thousand eleven, um, and they started to get you know a, a little following and was able to get on some some really good tours. I mean, toured with Crowbar, um, they toured with Helmet in two thousand eleven. Um, what year did we see Helmet? That was after two thousand eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was two thousand eleven when, when they toured with them. Um, they also played on the May- um, Rockstar Andrew Drink Mayhem Festival with um, Megadeth. Um, and in September, they, they went on a, a major tour with um, Dillinger Escape Plan and Mastodon. So they got a little, um, they, they kind of got known from that album. Um, and in 2013, they released Whales and Leeches, which is one of my favorite albums. Um, it actually hit number 66 on the Billboard charts. No so, shit. Um, yeah, so it actually, you know, it actually did very well as far as sales, obviously. That's um, cool. You know, and, and, and again, this is, you know, the time, it's 2013. People are starting to stream shit. They're not really buying physical copies. And um, in 2016, they, three years later, they released a follow-up to that, which is called Only Ghosts, 
which is another killer one, and that also entered the Billboard charts at 143. Wow! And I I could see why why it didn't go higher because now you know people have the, the streaming platforms. Right. You now by this time you have Spotify, you have um. Well, what used to what used to be Google Play is now YouTube Music. Right. Um. So you had all those, and and obviously. Um. You know, if people are streaming, it, it kills the record sales. So I could see why it didn't right. chart higher. And just this year, they released um, a great album um, called Arrows just a couple weeks ago. Um, kind of a little bit different than the previous albums. Um, but definitely their sound is definitely like a, a sludgy sound, kind of like a... It doesn't quite go to stoner metal, but it's it it is a slow sludgy sound, kind of along the lines of or maybe maybe early Mastodon. Okay. Um, de- definitely maybe Crowbar. Right. Um. Type of type of sludge. Yeah, I thought of and Crowbar I, when I heard the song. I play a clip from uh, the song Arrow. And I thought it, it reminded me of some crowbar riffs. And yeah, stuff. yeah, they definitely have a definite, you know, sound. Um, they owe they owe some of their sound to to crowbar, I I think. But um, you know, all their albums are pretty much available online. Um, the first one is very very hard to um find, but it is available, and obviously obviously you can stream it. But um, you know, again, I try to push the um. Physicals and F- shit. The yeah. physicals, you know, buy a shirt and all yeah. that shit. Well, CK, you're oh. going to be proud of me. Today I got a package from our friends in Byzantine. I ordered a shirt. I ordered two CDs, not just one, two CDs. Oh, really? W- w- which ones? I got the Cicada Tree and then the one before that. I can't remember. Oh, all. so the last two albums. Yeah, fucking I, killer. I think... Killer. And a Did big there, sticker. Love... OJ sent me a big sticker for the table. I'm I just love those to guys. Find where to put it? Um, I may put it on the wall. It's it's huge. Um, I definitely I definitely got to do a feature on them. I might do that next. Yeah, week. Yeah, they mean. would be great. They just start yeah. their tour tomorrow in Pittsburgh. By the time this episode comes out, it'll be tomorrow. So uh, yeah, Thursday, so. <laughs> the 29th, uh, Byzantines in uh, Pittsburgh. I can't remember the name of the club, but I'm sure you can find it. So. Yeah, I mean, you want to support these bands, and that's cool. And yeah, I didn't definitely. know anything about Red Fang, so you know, it's just always cool to, yeah, to hear definitely from you. Check them out. You know, you may like them, right? Not I know, for I know everybody, but hey, I know it's not. Of, I know it's not in your guys' wheel box as far as you know metal, but you know, maybe other people will hear and, and, and dig them. But yeah. No, that's you know, cool. But I no, definitely that's... know your Lost Classic. Yeah, the Lost Classic. That's a good one, CK. I, I do know that. Oh God, that's um, <laughs> Razor. Um, Razor from Canada. Um, Executioner song. Hell yeah. yeah. Um, it, it. I love it because it, it, it's very primitive sounding. Yes. If you listen to it. Um. Obviously, that's part they, of its got, appeal, though. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, they've gotten better over the years, right? But that being their first album, I just, I just, something about the, the, the primitive sound that some of these bands have. Well, yeah, I, like Venom. I mean, Venom wouldn't yeah. be Venom if they sounded spit polished in right. a studio. You know what I mean? <clears throat> it's got to sound like somebody's got an amp. Oh yeah, that fell down a flight of stairs and the microphone fell with it. You know? No, and they just something started playing it, their man. instruments. And, yeah, it's just raw. You know, yeah, but um, I I definitely love I I I you know, follow them since the beginning, and they've obviously progressed and they've gotten better over the years. But um, right. definitely check it out. I they just re- re-release a lot of their stuff on CD, so that so it is all available. Um, but check out Razor, um, Fuck especially yeah, execution the song that the the first album. Fuck yeah! All right, well I hear that music. Six, six, fucking six. We're going to talk about some of the shit we've been listening to. So let's check it out. Hell yeah. Six, six, fucking six. Onslaught. Uh, Another band I'd love to see come over here and tour. Um, 
Yeah, amazing band. Uh, great album last year, and uh, I know they're itching to get out there like everybody else. All everybody. right, well, we're going to talk about what we've been listening to here lately. And uh, CK, I'm going to start with you tonight. What have, oh, what have you. you been checking out, dude? Um, I've been checking out a couple bands. Um, digging, um, been listening to Metal Church, and I'll get a little yeah. bit, and then a couple minutes we'll get to the reason why I've been right. around jamming some Metal Church. Um, the new Flotsam, still killer. killer. Um, still digging that. Um, a band called Caius. Oh, yeah. From, um, the deserts of California. If you haven't checked out Caius, check them out. How do you yep. spell that? K-Y-U-S-S. Hmm, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I'm a very, fan Very, um, very, I would say that's definitely stoner metal. Okay. Um, but I, I've I've dug them for 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 years now. Um, cool. A band called OSI. Oh yeah, Jim Matheos. Which, um, Jim Matheos from Faith's Warning is in it. Kevin um, Moore. Also Kevin Moore from yep. Dream Theater. Former, um, former Dream, Dream Theater, Theater keyboardist. Right. And um, going old school, death metal, um, some Morbid Angel. Nice. Oh, and and not not to forget him, but I've been listening to. Um, some classic punk by the, Des- the Descendants as well. Hell yeah. Okay. Joey, what so, about you, dude? Uh, I've been listening to my Mindless Self-Indulgence. Um, I was listening to Anal Blast, Vaginal Vampire, because... Nice. Uh, Joey. Yeah, Joey <laughs> George. those guys. Yeah, Joey George, and he fucking wrote some of the... He was he was in the band at the beginning of it, but oh, not okay. for any recordings. Nothing. I didn't know that. Interesting. Um, and I've been listening to... Uh, I got um, Metallica Ride the Lightning. I was jamming that for a bit. and I can't, can't go wrong with that nope. one. Nope. And no. in the car right now, I got uh, Brutal Death Metal Band Cotard Syndrome. Fuck yeah, man. Yep. Chris, what about you, dude? Uh, for obvious reasons, yesterday I played some Slipknot and some fucking Murder Dolls and shit. Cause right. Why not? Fuck it, because I love it. It's right. It's been a while. Fucking. I was playing some Arch Spire the other day. I like Arch Spire. What else? Winds of Plague. Okay. Did a little core. Did a little core thing for a minute. <laughs> oh, Winds of Plague, fucking. Winds of Plague. They're fucking brutal. Dude, they're fucking badass, man. I love those guys. God damn, they're so fucking heavy, dude. Fuck yeah, dude. Well, I've been I've been told you guys have been jamming that Byzantine, and I got a DVD of theirs. Nice. Uh, that's an old one, CK. I can't remember. Um, I would know it if I, I heard the name of it. Um, but it's it's really cool. It's got a lot of live stuff and interviews with them, and it's just oh, cool. really cool. It's uh, from like 2002. So I didn't it's, know they uh, had one. Yeah, it's after their um, Skizogen too. It's after their second album. It's right before they did the third one. But the one I couldn't remember. I remembered I got the Cicada Tree. The other name is the one I like the best of all so far. Is to release. Is to resolve. Came out in yeah. 2015. Fucking yep. nasty, man. Wow. Really dig those guys. And uh, also been listening to my audio book, which I'm going to talk about later. But I uh, had a lot of driving to do this weekend, and I just am wrapping it up now. I am about halfway through our bonus 666 Express track on there. It's fucking hilarious listening to it Hell after yeah. a while. You know, our voices are all on there, and the music, and all the crazy sound effects. And I'm anxious that to was, see... That was so much fun. I'm anxious to see Mick jump up and fucking attack some zombies yeah. at the end. So <laughs> no, I'm not there yet, but it's it's starting to get crazy. So so I've been listening to that, and uh, uh, it's kind of weird listening to yourself read your own stories, but I really wanted to listen to the, how did it turn out, you know, things I can improve next time. Um, but uh, they set the price. I have nothing to say about that. I think it was uh, for members of Audible, it's seventeen something, and for uh, non-members, it's like twenty-four. But they base it on how long it is, so it's ten and a half hours of talking. So yeah, I it's just figured. that's how it works. It has nothing to do with anything else, according to them. So, so, so sounds reasonable. Yeah. So uh, you look at some of them, like the Stand and some of those monster books. Those are like forty bucks, fifty bucks. Yeah, because yeah, it's a lot of audio. I mean, you're listening to 
over a hundred hours of audio. That's a lot of fucking hours. Think about a hundred albums. Yeah. You know, yeah, you think guess, about that a hundred albums. That's how much it is. You know, so guess you got to pay for that. Um, yeah, you're paying for that voice actor yeah. and the people that produce those and everything. It's a lot of work, as I know, doing it. So now, CK, there's been some deaths here just very recently, and then one that dropped today. Yeah, um, so shit. go ahead and uh, let us know who that is. A uh, couple days ago, um, Mike Hal of Metal Church passed away as far as i know i i just looked it up there's no the family's not given a reason of of his death so, right you know i don't know he's he was only 55 or 56 so he wasn't that old you know maybe a heart attack i, I i'm not sure right yeah you always um, wonder and you sometimes you never know like riley gale have they ever formally said, said what it was i thought no i saw really I didn't. What did you? I thought I saw somewhere that was an overdose. I thought, but oh, maybe wow. not. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Um, not that I'm uh, uh, I'm not a huge fan of of Slipknot, but former drummer Joey Jordanson. Yeah. Um, he also passed away at age forty six. Yeah, yeah only, that's really crazy. He's only three years uh, older than me. Yeah, and any and, um, any uh, cause known so far? I don't know, but I didn't realize he had um. Uh, a neurological disease yeah, that took, oh. that took, uh, that took one his was reading took his leg. Yeah, um, a couple of years ago, so I, I was unaware of that. And um, you know, if, if he's playing, he, if he's playing with a prosthetic leg, more, you know, more power to him when he was alive. Because yeah, wow. um, you know, I just um, oh, he's ridiculous, man. So I don't I don't know if that had any cause to his right. death or not. They're not giving out a cause yet. No, yet. all they said is that he went peacefully in his sleep. Yeah, yeah in his sleep. sleep. Yeah. Oh wow. So yeah. um, it's a lot better than Whitey Bulger. Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. And, and the then new one, one, CK. And the third one, um, not metal, but very um, influential from a band that's. Very influential in, in all genres and a lot of genres. Um, Dusty Hill from CZ Top. Yeah, yeah bass player. Um, passed away this morning, I believe, was also in his sleep. That's what I read. Yeah, he was like 72, I think, right? Yeah. Um, definitely, definitely an influential band, and, and a number of bands have covered um, CZ Top songs, um, especially Motorhead. Yeah. They, they covered one or two. Um, I know they covered um, Beer Drinkers and Hellraisers on their first album. Definitely a killer um, cover song. Oh, but, sure, um, sure. You know, unfortunately, um, it's been, it's been a, a, a bad week at this point. Yeah, but, definitely. But, but, Joey, some good yeah, news you had to Tom report. Browning. Tom Hunting. Or, yeah, I was looking over here. Yeah, Tom Hunting of Exodus, the drummer, uh, he came back fully cancer-free now. So that was some good oh, really? news. Yeah, that was good news in their camp for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. They're doing so many good fundraisers for yeah. him, and that's yeah. really cool. We mentioned that before, yeah. Metalheads helping Metalheads. That's just Because these awesome. guys, I don't think these guys have insurance. A lot of them do. don't. It's, it's, it's not. Right. It's not the best. No, it's um, not. Unless you got lucky and you got a wife with good insurance. Right, or right. And no. They're not living I'm, some I'm, rock I'm, star I'm, fantasy. No, thing. not no, at all. I, I'm lucky. Um, even though I'm on disability, my um, co- company still pays for um. I I still get my insurance because I'm on disability. So right, right. Well, yeah, that's good news in in the midst of some bad yes. stuff. And yep. we've plugged our six 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 club, and that's a good thing, Chris, because that gives them some cool behind the scenes shit. Fucking right. Dude. Episodes early, ten percent off merch, karaoke when we do them. If you listen to the Whitey Bulger episode tonight, you oh, like that. We you did know an you're going to want to hear one. some Capone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's bucks. a bonus that you get with the six 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 club. So. Uh, link uh, is in the episode description. You go to patreon.com slash murder metal mayhem, three bucks a month, and you can become a member of the club and get all that VIP brutal access to murder Shit. metal mayhem. You ain't got to be if patched I, up or nothing to join our club. That's right. <laughs> if, 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 I, if I wasn't a host and got this shit free, I would pay for it. Yeah, I would too, man. I would too. 
All right, Joey, you went up to Chicago this week and had a good time doing some Goremonger. So. I did, yeah. I played a show up for fucking Reggie's in downtown yeah. Chicago, which is an Fuck awesome yeah. fucking club. Good turnout. Yeah, it was a great turnout. Uh, the place was pretty packed. I played second, and I mean... There was a good amount of people there for That's it. That's a great venue, is right. Yeah, man. it was awesome. So and, cool. And the sound was like... Oh, yeah, it rips. Out of all the Goremonger sets that I played, like that was top of the line, probably one of the best ones that I played. Yeah, I saw Fate's Warning there. It was oh, amazing. Hell yeah. yeah, they were really good there. So, yeah, but I played uh, the Monkey Man Open, which was uh, this dude with an accordion and a monkey mask and shit. He was classic. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, but he, he played, like, a bunch of, like, fucking video game song shit. It was, it was weird shit. But uh, <laughs> yeah, then I played um, Sacrificial Massacre played. It was from up by there. And then uh, Dysenter played. And that was, like, my biggest draw for playing that because oh, yeah. I fucking loved Dysenter f- since forever ago. Right. And they played some new songs that were fucking badass. They said they just recorded, like, 16 new ones. Yeah, they were a heavy core band. Yeah, those yeah. guys are badass. Uh, and then... Uh, what, what band was that? Dysenter. D-I-S-I-N-T-E-R. Oh, I, think, I think I've heard of them. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're old. I think they started in, like, 1990. Yeah, so they have a little a more of a, a death metal feel, but they're heavy as fuck. Yeah. But... Uh, so then they played, and then um, the headliner was Bitru, B-I-T-R-U, from Colombia, down in South America. And it was unfortunate because the whole band couldn't make it over with oh. their visas and stuff. Oh, shit. But he made it over, and he's obviously one of the guitar. It was a three-piece, but they he had the one man, but he had his drum set up. And he obviously had some friends. I think he did like a seven-day tour here in the U.S., so he had it where he was able to play. So that was cool. That's and cool. And he was a super awesome guy, and everybody was, like, fucking helping out each other. But, That's uh, awesome. The place was packed. That's everybody cool. was really responsive to the music, and fucking everybody had a good time and no drama and shit. So. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, um, I, I just saw a little while ago um, that Ray Alder and Mark Zonder, um, Mark Zonder for me a Fates Warning, I um, just formed a new band. It's oh, called A to Z. Oh, cool! I did see you mention something about yeah. that on Facebook, but didn't know what yeah, the band I, I, name was. That's cool. I um, I shared it on our on our site. So awesome. Um, you know they have an album coming out on on Metal Blade. So very cool. Very cool. I meant to mention that. Now, Chris, you and Joey are going to join me here in the studio. We're going to do a Voice of Dread together. That should be fun. We're going to be talking about Maximum Overdrive. (laughs) You don't like Maximum Overdrive. The Stephen King (laughs) short story inspired movie. Uh, Yeah, it's it's corny as fuck, but that's what makes it cool. I love that movie. Uh, It's almost the epitome of all 80s. It is. It really is. And we're going to have some fun with it. ACDC on the the soundtrack. ACDC is the whole soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah, So so very, very cool. Um, And we've talked about doing this for a while. And I took about six weeks off of Voice of Dread because I had a lot going on with the audio book and stuff. And now that all that's done, I'm going to start it off again, and we're going to kick it off with a Murder Metal Mayhem Gone Maximum Overdrive <laughs> in a Voice of Dread episode. Fucking right, so dude, that's going to be weird. A big mash, yeah. mashup. Is, uh, that'll be fun. Uh, also, we've talked about these shirts we've got, the Jeff Gaither design on the front, the zombies. Halloween's coming, Chris. What a better time to buy one of those shirts. Everybody likes to open a Halloween gift. Yeah, and you got a fucking zombie image of each of us on the front. And then it's Joey, awesome. a little blood spatter on the back, Fuck some yeah. murder metal mayhem. So uh, link to that in the episode description, but pick one of those up. And we've done plenty of metal tonight. So CK, tell us what the fuck we got to do. We need to get our mayhem on. You got someone who pisses you the fuck off? Have you tried to reason with them, but the dumbass just won't fucking listen? Well, contact both the anger management, division of Benoit Anger Management, and let us help you. Ed Bull just take care of this whole prick at work. He beat this motherfucker to death in the parking lot one night after work. 
Shit, he was in the hospital for a month and never came back. With extensive brain damage, I don't think he'll say a damn thing. Literally. Yeah. We take care of business the old school way. Don't worry about that jerk that lives next door with a stupid ass dog barking outside all fucking day. Forget about it. Or the boss that refuses to give you a weekend off when you just need that shit. Just call us at 888 Whitey Kills and mention pain and suffering when you check out for 10% off. Forget about it. I even use bulges when some asshole cut me off in traffic. With this sweet app, I was able to get someone to do a drive by and gun their asses down with AK 47s. I could smell the carbon from my car and it added that professional touch. Let Bulgy Anger Management save the stress. Download our app and pain and suffering is just a couple clicks away. Fuck yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that's such Man, a good one. the Benoit Anger Management Company, Chris, really diversifying <laughs> Bulger Anger Management. Oh, they have Jesus Joey Christ. doing the Bulger. I I honestly I forgot when that played. Yeah. I was like I heard it for the first time because I forgot that I who over. did which voice. I'm pretty and it was impressed that hilarious. the voice that I used you for did. the intro was kinda it's I noticed it's kinda it. close to that I one. I felt bad I didn't recognize it. Yeah. After I heard that, I'm like like, duh, yeah. you know, that's Joey's Whitey Bulger. So <laughs> that was great. And then me and CK playing some callers calling fun. in. And uh, Joey uh, just, yeah, that was just great. Good so uh, It's always fun to do those calls. Yeah, for sure. And last, uh, before that was uh, Red Fang and the song Arrow. And uh, CK was good to learn about something we didn't know anything yep. about. Hell yeah. Now, of course, we are in mayhem now, and that means we sometimes tell some tales and CK. You say you got one. You said you got one. Yeah, yeah. I have one um, from work. Um, It's not another shit in the aisle story? (laughs) No, 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 no. That was great. Yeah, that was good. No, this, this this one goes back to probably, I've been with the company for a year. I was probably 17 or 18. Right. Um, this is going back maybe 33 years ago because I just hit my um, 34th anniversary on July, beginning of July. Damn. Believe it or not. So I work. I work at a grocery store. Um, I manage now. Hopefully, um, nobody hears us because <laughs> if half these people heard the shit that we used to do, <laughs> I, I, I would. I would never be where I am now. Right. Or. If, if I went back to work, but um, we decided that we were going to go in the cooler because we got everything done early. I think there was four of us. It was at night. We decided we were going to have a wrestling match in the cooler. Well, that sounds a good fun. idea. Yeah. Um, now, you got to remember the cooler condensation you got you know it, it's it's moist on the floor right you know, everything's um, slick yeah you guys, see. a little a little slippery take your shirts off too no no <laughs> <laughs> a, a little slippery um you no know, things are going good until one of my friends decided to pick another kid up who was uh smaller than he was my friend, <laughs> just say small. We'll, we'll, we'll just say his, his name was was Tom. Okay. Was 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 a little on the bulky side. I don't want to say fat. That's but, all right. But, but Tom's a, a big, big dude, and big, this big, guy's big, a little guy. Yeah, big, big boned. Dude. Big boned, yes. So he decided he was gonna pick the pick the kid up and and pretend to body slam him. Oh. Well, he picked him up, lost his footing. <laughs> Uh-oh. And there was a pallet on the floor. It dropped the kid on his hip. Ah. His hip hit the, the corner of the pallet. Oh, that's not oh, good, dude. Oh, no. Snap. Probably shattered that shit. And, um, oh, my God. He was, as soon as he hit that, he was he was crying. He was in pain. And we're like, what the fuck we do? And, <laughs> and, and, and the kid who got hurt goes, I'll just, and he's, and he's in pain. He goes, I'll just say I, I tripped and fell. You you guys just go 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 get the mansion and get. I, 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 I got, I I got your back, guys. I got your back. Oh damn. Um, uh, so you know, he got picked up. They had to call the ambulance. Wow. 
Wow. Um, and, and, and he actually broke his hip. He was out for like a while. Oh, I can only man. imagine. But, um, Damn. That's my, that's my mayhem story. Wow, of, that's um, pretty good. Shit we used to do when... Um, Stupid shit you do at work. Fuck. Yeah, you know, besides doing whippets in the young <laughs> right, Of course. That's what I out. thought you were going to say. You did some whippets in the cooler. No, we did those too. And um, <laughs> me and my buddy... Yeah, those are fucked um, up. Dude. We'll, I'll call him Bill. We um, did him until he passed out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, Chris, I, you I got, got a quick, quick story. Yeah. This is just like last week. Okay. So this is how my week started. Sunday night, I lost my fucking phone. I couldn't find my phone anywhere. So I went to work all day Monday with no phone, everything. So I couldn't listen to no music. I'm fucking pissed off. And that was the last that was the last day we had to wear a mask. I'm fucking yelling at my bosses. I'm like, I'm sick of this shit, dude. Oh, fucking, damn. I'm not yelling at him, but I'm just like straight up telling him like I'm done. So the next day, I ain't saying it was because of me, but corporate comes back with like, all right, no more math. So <laughs> I get off work that day, I'm pissed off, fucking can't find my phone. I find, I find my phone. Cool. The rest of the week goes where, where, off. Where the hell was your phone? Oh, yeah, but my phone was in my couch in the basement, and I don't even remember being in the basement, <laughs> oh, by wow. the way. Like, I, I don't remember being down there at all, but that's where it was. <laughs> Maybe so, somebody hit it on you. No, I, I'm pretty sure I was drunk and went down to the basement. Probably. <laughs> <Okay>. Probably. <laughs> so, the rest of the week goes pretty all right, whatever, until Thursday. Me and Michael, we're drinking, whatever. Don't even, we just, me and Michael get into a fucking fight with each other to start beating the shit out of each other, right? Oh my well, in God. The, in the middle of all this shit, my phone gets fucking broke. So yeah, so me and Michael fight the shit out of each other. And then, yeah, my phone broke, like shattered the screen. I'm like, fuck. So now I start the week without my phone. Now I got to end the week without my phone, whatever. So, like, the next morning I wake up, I got no phone. Fucking Michael's come, coming over fucking because he lives right next door. I look at him, I'm like, what the fuck did we fight about? He's like, I don't fucking know. I'm like, I don't fucking know either. It's fucking, wow. But, dude, my fucking jaw hurts. I got this big-ass <laughs> bruise on my leg. What the shit just happened? And your, and your phone's <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, my phone's fucking jacked, dude. Jesus Christ. So, like, I have to go to work. Life at the nation. Dude, I had to go to work a fucking... Go, uh, I'm at work all day, like I said, with no phone. Fucking, uh, my dad was nice enough to take my phone to fucking go get the screen replaced, whatever. Right. So, I'm on my way to pick up my daughter when my phone gets finished. So, fucking Michael and Sam go to Normal Gadgets to fucking pick up my fucking phone. Michael has access to my phone. So next oh, thing no. I know, there's all these Facebook fucking posts fucking talking about like, shit. I'm a dirty butt pirate and fucking all this shit. I'm like, you're a fucking dick. <laughs> and at the same time, so like I'm in the car, right? And I got my laptop with me and my mom's driving me and shit. So I got my laptop hooked to a fucking hotspot on her phone so I can like at least message people through messenger and shit. Right. And I'm seeing all this shit pop up while I'm while it's happening. Oh, I'm like, man. God damn it, you That's motherfucker, hilarious. dude. But yeah, it's oh, fucking man. stupid. Dude. Wow. But I got my phone fixed and I got a good. brand new case for it. So That's good. <laughs> very, very good. I, 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 if I lost my phone, I don't know what I would do. I know. It <laughs> sucks when you don't dude. have your phone or it's not working right. I, I wish like, I'd lose my phone half, a lot. Right? <laughs> I wish I would disappear sometimes. My uh, life is on my phone. Like all my fucking shit that I have for my medical and all that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, my Creation of Chaos 3 book came out, as you guys know, and I thank everybody that's bought a copy, and uh, I link to that in the episode description if you haven't got one. If you get one from me, you get an 11 by 17 poster and a bookmark signed, and uh, you also uh, will get it from me. You can go to creationofchaos.com, or I'll link to that in the episode description. If you get it on Amazon, that's cool, but you won't get the other, the poster and the bookmark, and I think it's a little bit more on Amazon. Um, but now, Chris, after all these years, you've told me you ought to do your books in audio, and I'm like, no, no, no. Well, finally, finally I relented, it. and it's on Audible now. Creation of Chaos 3 is on Audible, iTunes, and Amazon, so go check it out. Um, it's very exciting. And uh, I was contacted by the Night Terrors podcast, which I mentioned last week. Uh, they have purchased the rights to use the story Cross to Bear. And that's going to be on an upcoming podcast within the next couple months. And they also want to do another story, but they haven't committed to one yet. So 
Uh, very, very cool, and it's nice to you know get the word out there and maybe get some new readers from and listeners because I always talk about both whenever I do anything. I'm always talking about Murder Metal Mayhem in the middle of it too. So, all right, so we got a good and I, and I know you I know you put a lot of work into that um, Audible. Oh Jesus, yeah, doing you it know, twice so, was enough. So definitely check it out because <laughs> because um. You know, you, Pete did put a lot of work into it, and um, yeah, and Tucker always, kills it too. Brad Tucker yeah, does the yeah. two stories on there; he's amazing. All right, tonight we got a good killer cage match. Uh, this is where we take seventy killers that we came up with, seventy objects for them to fight with, and we let our listeners pick some random numbers so we know who's going to fight, what they're fighting with, and the variable. In the cage, Chris, we want to say thank you. Yes, we do. We want to say thank you to Elizabeth Washington, Tommy Davis, and Samantha Cram. Thank you much. Fuck Fuck yeah. yeah, Thank you. And because of you three, we've now got this very strange (laughs) matchup, Joey. What the fuck is going on here? The drifter killer, Henry Henry Lee Lucas. And let's clarify, it's just Henry Lee, not without us. That's right. The (laughs) confessions killer. Uh, Yep. So Henry Lee Lucas, he's going to be fighting with child killer Andrea Yates. Hell yeah. We did Andrea Yates, Chris. I wish we did. (laughs) (laughs) About how she drowned all her fucking kids in the bathtub, dude. That's just fucked up. I wish we did. (laughs) (laughs) And CK, these two yahoos are going to be fighting with what? Oh, God, they're going to be fighting with a 2 by 4 with nails in it and a brass butt plug covered in feces. And, <laughs> That's right. And the variable is two millennial dudes, I love this, with man buns fighting over a tub of plant-based butter. <laughs> Oh, boy. So What the fuck? Now, everybody always bitches about going after Joey. So we're yeah, going to so start I'll with you. Off. We're going to start with you, Chris. What do oh, you man. think? You go ahead. Oh, what do you dude, think? Uh, basically, Andrea Yates is going to watch these two greased up millennials and be like, God <laughs> damn, that's fucking hot. <laughs> 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 Just be like, I ain't paying attention to nothing but that. Wow. Okay. And so, like, in the meantime, fucking Lucas, he's just looking at this butt plug like, did I just take that out of Otis's ass? I don't know where that came from. And grab that fucking two by four with the nails. And he's just going to walk up and smash all three of them, dude. Oh, damn. I'm Andrea going, and the millennials. Yep, I'm going with Lucas. <laughs> okay. I'm going with Lucas. <laughs> all right. Chris, uh, CK, what do you think, dude? Um, Obviously, Henry Lee Lucas has the um, upper hand. Um, He's a little Andrea, guy, though. She... she, she She's mentally challenged anyway, so she's going to be just staring into space, <laughs> um, you know, wondering what the hell is going on and why is she there. Um, <laughs> and Henry Lucas is just going to take that fucking baseball bat and just fucking pummel her until she's until she's done. Um, then he then I have to agree with Chris. I think he's he's going to take out the two millennials. Okay. Because they're, they're, they're just going to piss him off, and he's just going to get annoyed, and All right. he has to um, dispose of them. Okay. Joey? Uh, what I think is going to happen is uh, Henry Lee, he's going to go one way, and he's going to go racing for that butt plug covered with fucking shit. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Andrea Yates, she's going to run the other way. She sees those millennials, and they've got a tub of plant based butter. She's going to drown them in the tub of plant based butter. Tub. She's you. like, I need to drown these motherfuckers. Did somebody <laughs> say tub? Yeah. So she's God, going over. Good, dude. She's good. going over and drowning the millennials in the tub. Henry Lee, he's glad to have a little bit of time while she's doing that because he grabs that butt plug and shoves it up his own ass and fucks himself <laughs> with it for a little while. Then he fucking grabs that fucking two by four, runs over. After Andrea Yates has killed the dudes in the tub and fucking just smacks the fuck out of her with that motherfucker, knocks her on the ground, sticks the fucking the spiked end in her face and starts stomping on it and fucking kills her. He then takes the fucking remainder of the fucking post with the spikes in it and sticks that in his ass as well. Wow. So he went. That's like that's like that's like you can't go after fucking um Joey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I don't see how uh, old uh, Henry Lee Lucas is not winning this fight. <laughs> no, I think whoever all. gets a hold of that two by four, but I think Andrea, like uh, CK was saying, she's kind of out of it. You know, as Italians would say, stunad. 
Uh, <laughs> she doesn't know what the fuck's going on, and Henry Lee's going to fuck her up with that two by four, and possibly use the brass butt plug on her. Yeah, he might. and he's got oh, some yeah, of yeah. that plant based butter left. So if the butt plug oh, needs some help, you know, like he's that. got the tub of butter there. Tasty. So, oh. all right. Well, I think we've done our fair share of mayhem tonight. So let's hit that fucking outro. <laughs> That was Decapitated, the song Earth Scar. Those guys recently got out of the studio. I can't fucking wait. I love them. It's amazing how much different they are with the new members when after the accident happened. Yeah. But I still like both bands. I like them right. both. They are very different, though, of course, with different singer and different drummer. So, but, all right. Um, but but still, badass. Still kick ass. Very yep. badass. Uh, tonight, the bumper music, Iron Maiden, Red Fang, and, of course, Decapitated. Chris, CK's intro music is by which band? Crisis! Fuck yeah. <laughs> CK, Murder Metal Mayhem intro is by what band? By none other than the fucking badass band, the legendary <laughs> No Motherfucking 12. Oh, for Christ's sake. And Joey, the 66 six fucking 6 music. Hey, it's my fucking onslaught. Hey, thanks, Whitey. Uh, so thank you to everybody out there listening. Uh, we keep seeing the numbers rolling in. We were about 2,900 this last week, so thank you. We appreciate everybody that checks out the show, and we got some commenters here. Chris, why don't you take that first one there, dude? Uh, Nigel Simpkins says, uh, I'm in the UK, and I have a group of friends that really love your podcast. We often get together and listen have a few pints and get a lot of laughs. Thanks for kicking so much ass. Metal. Fuck yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Nigel. Well, love, love, love getting those comments from um, overseas. Yeah, yeah, that's thanks. really cool. It's awesome. it's awesome. Joey, we got a lady we want to say thank you to. Yeah, uh, Carla Johnson, 88. She commented, I really like that episode you did on the clutter murders. I didn't know much about that one. I've been listening for a year or so. I'm in El Paso, Texas. You guys fucking crush it every week. Awesome. Thank you very much. And yeah. yeah, El Paso, man, that's where my buddy was that showed me that link to our podcast. Oh, nice. Pop it up. Nice. So, yeah, we got some people down there checking it out. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Thanks. CK, what about this one? This is a good name here. Uh, Carol Baskin, Suck777. Seven, seven, seven. That's <laughs> awesome. Commented, Fuck. I was happy to hear CK do Mastodon last week. When I heard they were going to tour with Maiden, I was stoked. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Oh, we yeah, appreciate dude, it. Yeah, yeah thanks, I'm glad, Carol. I'm glad you definitely dug the um, Mastodon. Yeah, that's cool. Um, feature. That's very cool. Now, Marta Yancey commented, I'm a listener from Sydney. Hell yeah. And I love that Snowtown Murders episode. I have a cousin who lives in Snowtown, and you're right. They hate that those murders made them famous, so I can't oh, I can blame them. imagine, dude. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, I'm anxious for you to cover Ivan Malat. I read this and I was like, hell yeah, she's going to like this one. Because we're doing Ivan Malat, Chris, next week. Next week. Little backpacker murders. Uh, we are actually going to eat Vegemite, Marta, on the show. The three of us with some toast and butter. Jenny ordered some, CK. Yeah. yeah, you guys could. Um, <laughs> we're get, we have it. That. We got it yesterday, yeah, so it'll I'll be here. I will not order Vegemite. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Um, we are going to do it, and we're going to do it live on the show, probably at the end of the episode, because I thought if it's really gross and we're, like, throwing up and stuff, it'd be kind of fucked up to talk for an hour and a half about Actually, something I, after just all, throwing all up. That's mayhem. Remember is Sean, is Sean, <laughs> that's mayhem, bro. So, it's Sean right. from the mouth. It, Mouse is wake saying it's, a, it's an acquired taste. I know, yeah. and Sean said a lot of butter, so we'll have plenty yeah. of fucking butter, okay? So, Marta, thank you. That's cool. We're doing Ivan a lot less uh, next week, and so glad that uh, your comment came at a good time. Uh, don't forget to check out MurderMetalMayhem.com if you want to listen to the podcasts. Uh, if you don't uh, listen on an app, but you can really listen to us anywhere. Uh, Facebook, of course, Twitter, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
and support the show. Go to the 666 Club, patreon.com slash murder metal mayhem. And all this stuff I link to in the episode description. Also, creationofchaos.com if you want to pick up the new book. And also the Audible iTunes and Amazon version of it, an audiobook with me and Brad Tucker reading 13 creepy ass fucking stories. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> And it has the bonus version, Chris, of R666 Express. Right, fucking does. Which is cool with the music and all of us doing the voices, and it's going to be great. We're going to do that again. I got another one we're going to do. So check out the new podcast, voiceofdread.com. We're going to be doing that one on Maximum Overdrive, me, oh, Joey, yeah. and Chris. And that'll be coming out very soon. So uh, hopefully we get some Murder Mental Mayhem listeners going over there to check that out. And we can't let him go without hearing a karaoke song. This is one from the past, but it perfectly fits a Boston-themed feature this week. So crank it the fuck up. And until next time, keep one foot in the gutter. And your fist running the streets of Southie. Yeah, what they said. Forget about it. Where it began, I can't begin to know when, but then I know it's growing strong. Was it the spring? And spring became the summer. Who'd have believed you'd come along? Touching hands, reaching out, touching me, touching you. Sweet Caroline, good times never seem so good. the night and it don't seem so lonely we fill it up with only two and what I hurt hurt rubs off my shoulders how can I hurt when holding you Warm, such and warm, reach it out, such and me, fucking touch it,